thanks everyone that is watching this presentation right now. For me, this is a huge opportunity. Uh, you don't know how much I appreciate um, to be here right now. So uh, today I will showcase to you how uh, I use Airflow and Selenium together uh, to work with scrappers. So first of all, let me introduce myself a little more. So my name is Alvaro Avila, I'm 24, and I'm a computer engineering student at Simon Bolivar University in Caracas. I'm currently based on Maracaibo, Venezuela, and I work as, as an associate software engineer at Moonshot Partners. You can find me on LinkedIn, and you can also find me uh, uh, via email or in the Slack channel of the Airflow community. Okay, and the project that I will demonstrate right now it basically tries to solve the following problem. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, first, we will see how uh, what the problem statement is, and furthermore, we will see how the setup of the AS Airflow tool that we developed uh, is configured. We will also demonstrate some project definitions that we uh, we created to ease the usage of this uh, Airflow um, tool, and we will also also some show some features and have finally a live demo of the tool and all the features that we develop. Um, and in the last step, we will have uh, the the area for questions and answers. So let's jump ahead with the problem statement. So uh, when building data extraction pipelines based on scrappers, there is no tool for developers to directly define, orchestrate, and execute the scrappers. And I specify directly for developers because we can surely find online some tools that for example, some scraper, scrapers that we can pay for them to run or some data already extracted from, uh, from the data sources that we are interested in. But specifically, when we want to control these scrapers, uh, there's no tool to directly deploy them to an environment, to a production environment and orchestrate the task of scrapes. So there are many solutions online uh, for this problem, and most of them end up combining a series of tools and services to achieve the expected behavior, to, to be able to define, orchestrate, and execute scrappers. So uh, last year, I came up with uh, an idea of integrating Selenium with Airflow to provide all the features that Selenium uh, provides for scrapping and combine them together with all the features that Airflow provides to orchestrate and execute tasks. So basically, we developed a tool that consists, consists in the following steps. We write our scrappers using the Selenium library for Python. We orchestrate our Airflow runs or scrapper runs inside Airflow, and we monitor our results in a combination of Airflow log, logs and BigQuery uh, results, okay? So these three steps are the only steps that we need to manage to use the tool, okay? So uh, let's see how to set up the tool and we came up with a very easy way to set up the AS Airflow image. So we basically made a fork of the uh, Airflow Docker image, and we simply added the requirement back the, the required packages to use Selenium with a browser driver included. Okay. So basically to set up this tool, you simply need to download the Docker Compose file from the Airflow official website or, or, or GitHub. And you simply need to modify a single line from this file. You need to modify the line where we define 
the airflow image uh, that we want to use of Docker, we simply put the image on the Avicans slash AS airflow. Okay. And that's it. We are ready to use the uh, uh, the image simply by running our Docker compose op command. Okay. So that's all the setup needed for the tool to work with your airflow environment. Next, uh, I will demonstrate some project de definitions because we needed a way to start organizing our scrappers because uh, Scrappers tend to be in code more like um, really large uh, scripts that are hard to maintain. And we needed a way to uh, make the, the maintenance of this project uh, more uh, viable, right? So we come up with some project definitions and we categorized uh, different scrappers that we had in our project. So first of all, we define what an extraction scrapper is. And this is a scrapper that is in charge of extracting data directly from an URL. And a, um, and a characteristic of these scrappers is that they do not handle navigation, okay? And I'll, tell you why we didn't want to handle navigation in the next steps. So a discovery scrapper is another kind of, of scrappers that is, uh, is in charge of finding URLs for another scrapper, right? Uh, so these are like middle step scrappers that we use in our pipelines. We also define an enrichment scrapper because we found this useful a combination of an extraction and a discovery scrapper. It is a more complex scrapper that can handle both same things. And it can, it can basically find URLs and extract data at the same time from a specific website or a web URL. And finally, we define a session scrapper that is a scrapper that handles navigation. And I mentioned again navigation because navigation uh, comes to be a problem when running scrappers. And I'll tell you why in the next slide. Okay, uh, the project features. I will present now six project features that we developed for this uh, project. So the first of all is the scrappers queuing, the, the where we can scrap, uh, queue scraps together part of the same airflow task. We will showcase how error tolerance is managed, uh, basically how much errors we want to ignore when working with several URLs. We will also uh, present to you how we handle error reporting uh, to, to debug errors, basically. Also, scrappers enrichment, uh, how we use queuing to add more data to our results. And the last two features are browser simulations and browser resets. And the first one, browser simulations, uh, uh, helps us to run our scrappers before deploying into Airflow for testing or debugging purposes. And browser resets make our scrappers use the lowest memory resources possible. And next, we will deep dive in each one of these features that I just mentioned. So the first of all, scrappers cubing. So we encountered that uh, in many of our scrappers, we needed to handle navigation through URLs. And when building a scrapper that handles navigation, you start to make, create a script that is really large and hard to maintain and to find errors in it. So basically we decided to handle navigation apart of extraction, okay? Also navigation means using more cached memory because we need to handle the cached memory from previous URLs. And this increased our memory resources at a high phase, okay? So the more cache we use, the more resources we consume and the higher cost 
uh, a scrapper uh, has. Okay, so we came up with the solution. We separate navigation from extraction, and we uh, make them in different scripts as different steps. Okay, and we try to avoid combining both in the same scrappers. So basically, this comes to be our responsibility for the developer. The developer needs to try to avoid navigation and extraction in the same scrappers. Okay. So when we separate the scrappers in these kind of steps, we needed a, a way to combine them together in a later step when we run the Airflow task. So we created the scrappers queuing feature that allowed us to split our scrappers into these extraction and discovery uh, scrappers that basically are different steps for the scrapping and we can join them together to, to finally have our target data extracted, okay? So the second feature is the scrapper's enrichment. And this is basically because we found that in some cases, the target data is spread through several URLs, okay? So we needed to, uh, for example, grab a field from a URL, another field from another URL, and we couldn't achieve this without navigation, okay? And a single extraction scrapper with no navigation could not extract everything. But we found out that uh, uh, when we have different steps in our scrappers, we can extract data from each one of the step, these steps, okay? Not only the final steps. And we still wanted to avoid navigation because it was still inside our interest to reduce memory usage. Okay. So, uh, Scrapper's queuing, the previous feature, allowed us to send URLs from one scrapper to another. And we said, hey, why not send in more data? We can send more data in the exact same step. And basically, we define what enrichment is. For a scrapper. Enrichment means sending data from one scrapper to another and not just URL. We can send any data that we want, all happening inside the same Airflow task. Okay. As part of the same task. So uh, in another page, we found out that we had the following problem. Scrappers tend to fail. If a scrapper targets a thousand URLs or ten or ten thousand URLs, and one of the URLs fails, should we consider the scrapper as broken? So we encountered this uh, uh, this problem, and we realized that, that, that we want, wanted to manage different behaviors for different scrappers. So we created what we call the error tolerance, and the error tolerance basically tells Airflow, when should we consider the scraper as broken, okay? And considering the scraper broken means stopping the execution of the Airflow task and releasing resources. And a broken scraper, we translated this into basically the failed Airflow task that we could use to trigger uh, a message for the developer team to fix something that was broken in the scrapper or to check whether the website is uh, is down or something else happened, okay? So we decided that we wanted to handle uh, error tolerance separately for each scrapper. So each scrapper can manage its own error tolerance. And what we mean as error tolerance is, for example, if I say I want a 10% of error tolerance, I mean that I would uh, the, the, the scrapper should be broken when it fails in 10% of the URLs, okay? So uh, broken scrappers mean uh, fail task in Airflow, meaning uh, resources released, okay? So the next is uh, a feature that is related to error tolerance and it's error reporting. When we have error tolerance, we leave our scrappers 
do um, have some errors and do not exit the execution. So basically these errors that do not halt the execution, we wanted to store them inside where we can track them and analyze them in a future step. So instead of ignoring these errors due to tolerance, we should still be able to see what happened in those cases. So we started collecting and storing these errors in BigQuery for every scrapper task. And this enables us to track error metrics on scrappers, which in turn will allow us to focus on scrappers that could be extracting more, more data or scrappers that could have some uh, fits in, okay? So, and the last two features, uh, the first of them is the browser simulation, okay? And when we integrated Selenium and Airflow together, we realized that Selenium library uh, has a tool to control a browser instance very easily from our code. So this came up to be a great tool for testing or debugging purposes. When you are developing a, a scrapper and you want to check how the scrapper is working, you can visually check the, the scrapper by creating a browser instance. So this is uh, something very powerful for developer development and testing environments, but not for production. For production, we want it to handle basically uh, headless brow browsers inside Airflow to avoid consuming more resources. So when testing or debugging, looking at our scrappers working in a browser was a very powerful feature. So we implemented the feature that Selenium has in our debugging and step testing environment. So what that basically means is that instead of running one line at a time uh, from uh, our command line, we wanted to have a way of run the entire script uh, uh, inside a browser simulation, okay? And this comes handy, uh, especially when we want to fit a scrapper and we don't know where the scrapper is broken. So instead of going line by line, we, we can simply run a simulation and take control of the simulation at the exact moment where it fails, okay? And this saves us time in fixing our broken scrappers and deploying them to production, okay? So basically, Simulations allow the developer to take control of the browser at the exact place where the scrapper fails. Okay. And finally, browser resets. And this uh, this is related to memory management. So we realized that scrapping a hundred websites requires requires at least 33 gigabytes of memory. And that's basically because uh, raising a browser instance costs around 300 to 400 megabytes, okay? So uh, this is a huge memory usage. And if we hadn't, uh, we, if we had not an optimal memory management, the number of gigabytes can easily increase to 100, okay? And we, we started looking at our resources consumption and the, uh, the behavior of our scrappers. And we realized that some scrappers tend to use more memory when they handle navigation, for example, or when there is a lot of cached memory for a specific website. So what we needed to do is a way to reset our memory, reset our cache, and start uh, fresh as new with a new browser instance. So we implemented what we call browser resets that uh, is what the key piece that actually optimizes our memory usage when we do queuing or when we do enrichment in our scrappers. So resetting means destroying all cached memory and starting a new browser instance. And in our environment by default, when a scrapper finishes, its browser is destroyed and a new one is created for the next scrapper in the queue, okay? Remember when I talked about uh, scrappers queuing? Each one of the scrappers in the queue will have its own browser instance that would be created 
when the scrapper starts to run and destroy it when the scrapper finishes, okay? And we also found out that this feature is also very powerful when we can use it inside a specific uh, scrapper. So we can handle browser resets not only when the scrapper starts and ends, but also in the middle whenever we want to, to do it. So basically we want, we can, for example, tell the scrapper to reset after a thousand URLs or 300 URLs, okay? And with that simple uh, configuration, the, the our library resets the browser. And this was the way for us to handle uh, and to optimize our memory management, okay? So a lot of features covered, a lot of, theoretical uh, content in here. Let's go to a live demo right now and tell you basically what we meant with some of that features, okay? So first of all, oh, <laughs> I have a lot of notifications there. Uh, the Airflow Web UI that we all know, okay? So in here, each of these Airflow DAX is a scrapper, okay? Now uh, let's take a look at what a scrapper would look like in our graph view. So basically, the first task of a scrapper DAG is the scraping task, okay? And that basically runs this, the scrapper and stores the extracted data in a data lake. For us, it was BigQuery, okay? So then we handle another task that are not related to the uh, to the project per se. They are like passing data from one side to another. Just some uh, common task when we that we want to manage the airflow. So the scrapping task uh, is the first one of all these scrappers. And we can see the code of what a scrapper task configuration would look like, okay? So, here we have a scrapper task, and I will show it to you uh, this also in our uh, in our Visual Studio Code. But basically, I wanted to show it here first uh, because I wanted to show how a scrapper operation operator works. Okay, so we define a custom operator color a scrapper operation operator, and in here we define which scrapper we want to use. And in this case, we use two scrappers and we basically we are using scrappers queuing in this operator. And these are all the URLs that we want, we want to start with, okay? So the first scrapper works with, with the URLs that are found here. And the second scrappers works with the URLs extracted from the first scrapper, okay? That's basically how our, our scrapper's queuing works, okay? And let's jump ahead with Visual Studio Code now. Uh, so, for example, we can see here, and it's clear, how to use uh, scrapper's queuing. Basically, defining a list of, of scrappers to use activates the scrapper's queuing functionality inside the Airflow operator, okay? So it starts to run each one of these scripts one by one and uh, until it finishes and then it, it stores the results in BigQuery, okay? Here we have another example where we have three scrappers queued together, okay? And we can also, we can not only pass URLs from one scrapper to another, we can also pass additional information specific to the scrapper. And that's what we call uh, scrapper's enrichment. Uh, scrappers gets enriched with the data from a previous scrappers. And it all happens inside the, the same scrapper operator, okay? Now let's jump ahead and see what a scrapper script look like, okay? So this is a scrapper script. It basically uses the Selenium library 
to handle, to, to extract data from a specific URL, okay? So the scrapper uh, does not need to handle navigation. It, uh, the scrapper starts with a, a browser instance that it has already a uh, URL loaded, okay? And here, for example, we define uh, a way to test this scrapper. So this test is what we call the browser simulations. Okay. So basically what we want, we can do here is running this script directly from our command line. And we will see how the scrapper works uh, live with a Firefox instance. Okay. So I'll just run Python and search for my file. This file is called classes. Okay, and hit enter and the scrapper task starts. So this is this comes very handy when we want to test or debug our scrappers. Okay. We can basically see and you just uh, realize there that the browser uh, shut down and then restarted. That's basically because we uh, finished the first scrapper and started with the second scrapper. Okay, so now the second scrapper is running and we can track its progress right here. Right now, it will, it is scrapping 160 URLs. Uh, so we are not going to wait for this to finish. Uh, but you can see right now how the browser simulation works. Okay, the browser is fully managed by our code, our scrapper. And whenever a scrapper finishes, we can see the results right here, okay? So that's what we call the browser simulations, okay? And we also saw how the browser reset works, okay? When a scrapper ends, the browser shuts down to release memory resources and starts with a fresh one that has no memory uh, uh, catch it, okay? So I'll stop this process right now. That was just a demonstration. And we can, okay, we also, we already saw how browser simulations and browser resets work. I also showed you how to configure error, uh, scrappers queuing and it basically handles scrappers enrichment in the same step. So the the next two features and the final two features are the error handling, okay? And the one of them is the error tolerance and the other one is the error reporting. So error tolerance uh, means how much errors from each one of the, for example, in here, uh, we had 160 URLs how much URLs do we want to, to fail before killing the airflow task, okay? So that's what we call airflow to, uh, airflow tolerance, uh, error tolerance. And we have a default to tolerance for our scrappers of 5% uh, tolerance, okay? And this can uh, be managed from each scrapper, okay? So each scrapper only needs to uh, change the number of the error threshold, and that's it. That will be the error tolerance, okay? So error tolerance is defined at a scrapper level. In here, I can, for example, say that this scrapper has an error threshold of uh, 0 0.1, that means a 10% error threshold, okay? And that's all the configuration I need to add. And the last feature that I wanted to show is the error reporting. So we are handling torrents and we are basically ignoring some errors. What happens to those errors? Our scrapper uh, operator uh, collects those errors and store them in BigQuery. So in BigQuery, uh, I will showcase to you how we organize this. Basically, we have um, our results stored in different data sets and in different tables. Okay, we have product intelligence, current 
currency intelligence. And we have a special data set that is called the airflow monitoring. This airflow monitoring data set is in charge of storing errors for each one of our scrapers. So each one of these tables is directly linked with a scrapper uh, or with an airflow DAG. Okay. So we can actually see the errors that are being ignored in our airflow task. Okay. And this comes handy when we want to debug something in the future or basically track some metrics of the errors that we are having in our airflow scrappers. So that's the end of the presentation. Basically what we have here is a tool to not only orchestrate and run our scrappers, but also define our scrappers and all within the same uh, ecosystem. Okay. We do not have to go to third party or, or use some more technologies, uh, learn to use some more technologies to use this. We only need uh, Python and learn to use to how to use Airflow. And that's it. With it, you can start building your own scrappers uh, from zero. Okay. So uh, in this moment, I just want to say thank you to everybody here. Um, this is very important for me. And I wanted to open to your questions.